Welcome back, everybody. We're warming up because today I'm going to show you uh, a plan for practice. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Kalani. This is World Drum Club. I had a question from a fan of the channel about how to best make use of practice time. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to show you four things you can do, four steps uh, that you can use to get more out of your practice time. So let's get to it. First, you want to warm up. Always warm up, especially as you get older or if you're not a professional, you don't play a lot. Uh, but I don't want you guys to hurt yourself and I want you to feel good. So let's warm up, you know, just stretch. We're not going to do the whole thing right now. I have videos on warming up for percussion, but some of the things I like to do, just move your fingers a little bit, a little massage here and there and, uh, you know, just get the blood flowing. And then you can warm up on your instrument. That's fine. Start off with something gentle. Like if I'm playing the bongos here, you know, I don't want to go right for maybe edge tones right away, but you could certainly uh, use your whole hand and then start to zero in from there. You know, so start off with something general and then as you feel better, you know, just uh, get into some more of the techniques that might, you know, not feel so comfortable on a cold morning. All right. The other thing you can do, which I do a lot, especially if, you know, when we're on the road and we have to warm up off stage, we don't even have our instruments. We have to run on stage and start playing is use your good old lap or a tabletop or something, a pillow, you know, on a table, anything. Um, you can do a lot of warm ups just, you know, on your body, body percussion. All right. So warm up a little bit and then go into rhythm while you're warming up. That's why I had this click on. And here's another thing, you guys. What tempo is this? You want to, as a percussionist, tune into the different standard tempi, tempos. And um, this is one of the big ones, right? It's probably one of the most common, especially in pop music. You know, so think about disco. <laughs> think about a march. And yeah, this is 120. So another thing you can do is warm up to a specific tempo and then every time you practice, that's gonna get ingrained, all right? So you guys, all, you should all be familiar with, you know, where 120 is, how does that feel? And then just keep warming up. Play something easy, maybe something familiar. Whatever, all right? Play something familiar and warm up. Now, then we're going to move on and we're going to go into what I'm just calling tones and techniques. So this is where you're going to practice your sounds, your tones, and techniques, all right? And that all goes together. A technique is a way to produce a tone, right? We're not just doing things on the drum to do things on the drum. We're, we're using techniques to produce specific sounds. So, for example, if I'm on the bongos here, one of our uh, one of our tones is like a muted edge tone, right? We we'd use this tone for martillo, and it's the fingertips. I'm muting the head in the middle, and I want I'm not playing really loud right now because I, I have one mic, um, and it's for my voice most mostly. But I want to get that that tone. I want to work on that. So what do you do? Now you can stop the metronome for this so you can concentrate. I don't, I don't want you to feel pressured to play at a certain tempo. Uh, this is about quality sound. So when you're working on tones and techniques, you want to focus, pay attention. Do not do this watching TV or something, or you know, just don't do anything else. Focus, listen, pay attention to the sound. Listen, pay attention to what you see or what you feel. All right, so even if you're blind, you, you, when you sit down and play percussion, pay attention to the, the actions, the movements, and the sounds that are coming out. And that's going to be you teaching yourself because supposedly you've listened to other percussionists. You've listened to music that has the instruments in it, bongos, lots of music, Look, listen to some salsa, check it out have an idea of where you're headed. That's also really important. So that's something that you can do before you practice. Make sure you know where you're going. In other words, make sure you know the sound you're going for. And then when you sit down, you're going to pay attention, 
practice as slow as you need to, as deliberately as you need to. Work on those tones and techniques. For example, another technique might be the thumb and fingers on bongos. Now something, for example, I see a lot of people doing, they swipe. They go like this. That produces a lot of extraneous motion and extra sounds. All we're doing is just going back and forth. Thumb in the middle, fingers somewhere else. Back and forth, thumb, fingers, thumb, fingers. Now you might think, well, that's so simple. Why do I need to practice that? Why do you need to practice it? Because it is simple, but it's not easy. And you always want to get better. Whatever you're doing, see if you can make it a little bit better. So whatever tones and techniques you're working on, and we're working on these, why? So we can play music, so we can sound how we want to sound, and it's easier for us to play. Because on a gig, you know, that's not the time to be practicing. So you do your practice like you work out, you go to the gym. Why do you go to the gym? So you can be better at going to the gym? No. So you can be on a hike and not get tired. So you can go surfing, you know, and be safe and not get tired and do it better. Same thing here. So think of the tones and techniques, little period there, uh, as you're like, you're in the, your drum gym, you're, you're doing your drum gym stuff, you're working specifics. You could take that analogy as far as you want. Specific areas, specific actions, and it's, it is conditioning. But let's go on and combine those into what you could think of as more like the conditioning or, you know, treadmill part of it, which I want to emphasize not just the physicality, but the musicality of this next section, which I would call groove, all right? You've got to spend time playing. Uh, and grooving. And what does that mean? It means uh, not just playing in time, and we'll put the metronome back on for this, not just playing in time, but playing musically. Um, I think of groove as a matter of what we call micro timing, right? Micro actions, micro timing. The big picture is, are you playing in tempo, right? What, what are you doing? Are, is it even in time at all? All right, we can check that off our list. What's next? Are we playing the pattern? Are we playing the rhythm? Are we getting the subdivisions, right? What is the pattern? Um, are we executing that? Okay, check that off. Now, number three, how does it feel? All right, is it grooving? And to work on that, you're going to nail the first two things, right? Is it generally in time? Are you playing the notes? Uh, are you playing the pattern? And what you can do to support that, support, to support groove, is play along with music, number one. Number two, play to a click and record yourself and listen back to it later and be honest, all right? I need you guys to do that. that this is the work, you guys. This is, this is what we do. So you put on a click. Let's go a little slower. Let's go to 100, right? So you practice at 120, practice at 100 so you know what that feels like and sounds like. And then if it helps, you can also put on a subdivision, like eighth notes or sixteenth notes. Let's leave the eighth notes on, just in the back. Now, it doesn't matter what you're practicing, but see if you can do it with a... Do it with a groove. And keep it simple. Now what we call playing in the pocket. What is that? That means playing right in the groove, right on time, not early, not late. A lot of people, you think, oh, he's a little behind the beats, a little late. A lot of people play early. Why? What's the rush? <laughs> so make a recording. I would try that at a you know, medium slow tempo, maybe 80 to 100 BPM. And listen back and be, uh, be critical of yourself. You know, in a good way, you're just gathering information. You need to have a mirror, or in this case, an audio mirror, vis-a-vis -vis the recording, and then you assess what is happening. 
Um, if you have a computer, you can even do that. You can record into the computer and then use a digital audio workstation or DAW or something that will give you the audio waveform. And if you've recorded your click into the computer too and you've got headphones and you, you practice with a click, then you can see, you can literally see if you're early or you're late. So those of you that want to take it to the next level technologically, you don't have to. I'm saying if you have it, if you have the technology, uh, you could use it that way. And then you could literally see how the waveforms are lining up. And sometimes that's easier than hearing them because if they're very close, it's sometimes hard to hear. All right. The last section of your practice is going to be um, what I, it's a very technical term. It's called noodling. <laughs> All right. And, um, and this is a, a time where, you know, you pick up maybe 10, 15 minutes at the end of, let's say, the hour of practice. I think it's important for you to press through some of your boundaries, and we're not going to worry about playing in time necessarily or even playing, you know, with a click or playing specific patterns. It's a time for you to experiment and try new things, all right, and push yourself over the edge a bunch of times. Don't worry about how it sounds. You're not making a recording in this unless you want to hear some ideas that you might have. All right, so what does that sound like? Well, um, I don't know. Let's let's go to 90 beats a minute. And, um, you know, for this, maybe we'll put some triplets on. You know, maybe you don't practice the triplets very much. And I'm just going to goof around, all right? All right, just play whatever. Play whatever and push yourself. And what that's going to do for you is it's going to give you another reading of where you are musically, where you are creatively, uh, what you might want to work on or need to work on for your next practice session. Does that make sense? So that's a time also to relax, enjoy yourself, goof around, noodling, all right? Noodling is also a great way to pass the time. All right, you guys. That's what I have for you in this video. So let's, um, let's review. Section one, warm up, and then warm up with rhythm, but in, you know, in a general way. So just warm up, say hello, sit down, get, get in the groove, get in the space. All right, then you're going to go to tones and techniques. Practice your tones, practice your techniques. It's, it's related, right? The tone is what comes out of the technique. Do it slowly, pay attention, make little corrections after, and, and this is important too, after you have done some listening so you know where you're going, you know what you're going for. Same thing with the next section, number three, groove. Just groove. Play a rhythm and play it well. You can, you can try some solo stuff in there if you're working on soloing or ideas, that's fine. But mainly, because this is the bread and butter, this is what we get paid to do, is just play a groove, you know? Play a groove. And then record it and see if you can assess later, listen back later, and maybe not right after. Maybe just give it, give it a little bit of time and then listen to it later. And then, and then to your, yourself, you're going to think, is that me? <laughs> That sounds amazing. All right, so groove. Um, and then also, while we're doing all of this, you're using your metronome or backing tracks and you're paying attention to the tempo, right? So you can make a little note and you'll get actually tempo muscle memory later too. You might get that muscle memory like where you can just do 120, like let's go 120. Okay, I know what that feels like, you know? And then finally, um, after you've grooved for a little bit, then forget all that stuff and noodle around have fun, experiment, push yourself uh, over the edge, over the edge, over the edge, in, into new territories, into some new ideas. And there you will discover something special, something unique, uh, something maybe that you're interested in, in pursuing. And you put that in the bucket or in the file folder and you take that out for the next time uh, you want to practice. You say, oh, I'm, I, I had this idea. Uh, at the end of my last practice session, let me, let me work on that a little bit. Let me explore that and develop it. All right, that's how we grow as musicians. And that's one way you guys can, um, 
you can get better. So what do you think? If you agree, if you want to add anything to this, or if you do some of these and you want to add to anything I've talked about, please do that in the comments below. Of course, if you'd like to connect with me more, you know where to do that, patreon.com slash Kalani. You can also message me through my website, kalanimusic.com. Thanks for being here at World Drum Club, you guys. I appreciate it. We are community supported, so please donate over at patreon.com slash Kalani. Enjoy practicing and make the most out of it. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for being here. See you next time.